So I have started the recording. Uh, this is just me testing out my new cap screen recording script. Um, it's for OpenBSD. Um, I've been, I'll just go in here to my terminal, uh, just so we go ahead and clarify. Uh, I know this is a recording and my terminal font is going to be kind of small. I do not remember control shift plus. No, that's not it. Um, control plus. No. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember what the key combination is. I think I have to patch ST to get it to resize. But anyway, um, forgive the font being small. But if I go in here to my programs folder, you can see I actually have scripted out quite a few different um, like tools for um, different things on my system, which I'll kind of like run through here and show. But first things first, let me show how the screen recording uh, program works. Now, all of these have make files and um, man pages for them. So like I can, now that I, because I have it installed, I've ran, I've run the, you know, sudo or do as make install um, for uh, any one of these programs, like if I CD into cap screen here, um, and I run do as make install, you'll see it'll ask me for my password and I can give it the password and boom, it goes through, installs cap screen and rebuilds the man database. So I can run man uh, cap screen and I actually have written a man page for it. Uh, all, pretty much all the different programs that I've written or scripts, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they all take different flags. Um, my YT search script, which is a script that I wrote that uh, if you just run it by itself, it'll prompt, it'll like, it'll give you a prompt to search. This is for searching YouTube. So I can search, um, let's, let's see what's something good. We'll search like Luke Smith. So it searches. Now this, this script actually takes an API key uh, for YouTube. Um, I believe I, in the man page for it, um, if we do man YT search, uh, oh gosh, I got to type it out fully. Um, man YT search. Yeah. Um, I need to improve the steps here cause you actually need to go and enable the YouTube, um, API, um, in the library section. Um, and then create cr like it, this can step thing here is not clear um, I need to make it a little bit more clear and I'm going to do that uh, before like if you're wanting to get any of these scripts uh, they're not going to be on my GitLab yet um, they're just not uh, maybe if you're watching this far, far enough down the line they probably are on my GitLab but right now they're not just because I don't really I don't, I don't think they're ready yet personally. Um, I just want to go through and really fine tune the documentation before I do that, just in case anybody else is wanting to do the same thing I'm doing, which I would like to run all my stuff through the terminal and, um, you know, keep my system as light as possible. Cause, um, let, let me go over here. And if I run H top, you can see, um, the like recording right here. I'm on my old, uh, ThinkPad uh, T440p, which to me, this is a new laptop, but it's like 12 years old. I love this laptop. Absolutely love it. It's great. Um, but you know, I've done a lot of modifications to it. Um, but I, I find that really heavy web applications, uh, like JavaScript websites, like discord and stuff like that. Um, they're just kind of slow and unresponsive, like, you know, YouTube, all that stuff. So I made my own where I can search through here. Like, let's say I'm going to watch, yes, everyone on the internet's a loser. I can click there. Then it's going to stream that into uh, MPV. Yeah, you heard me. So everyone on the internet is a loser. There we go. We can watch a Luke Smith video. And, um, you know, I could just watch it here. It's going to um, load it um, over here and, you know, buffer it. It, um, it streams it. I can stop it, kill it, 
stop watching it and then it'll actually ask me here in the terminal if I want to download the video. Um, it's going to default to no. Now YT search does have a config file so I can go into my dot config directory YT search and I believe it's just called config and so I can set the download format for uh, YT DLP right here so you know uh, I have it just defaulting to uh, seven like you know best quality 720p um, or below um, if it's not available and then uh, uh, I have auto downloading turned off uh, you can turn it on if you want uh, where every time you watch a video at the end it'll just go ahead and download it um, I'm gonna be expanding the config file um, giving you the ability to set your download location kind of general stuff like that um, but uh, if we load up cap screen here which is what I'm using to record I actually, I keep forgetting I've got to fully type out the man pages, but um, I've got a whole bunch of different flags here. Like this one doesn't really have a config file. You do everything through flags. And for the most part, pretty simple program. Uh, you set up your webcam resolution. Um, you know, if you want to record with a webcam, uh, you can, you don't have to. Uh, if you run it without the dash W flag here, um, your it's just going to record your screen and it assumes you have like a laptop screen or um you know a desktop configuration with either only one monitor or one where at least there the monitor you want to record is at zero zero on xorg which you know if you have one that's where it's at but um you can set your your resolution all that kind of stuff and um, yeah, it, it uses VA API to record. It's it's very nice. It's a good script. Um, I can CD into programs, cap screen, and we'll open up the cap screen script. And you can see it's just a simple shell script. All of all of these scripts are just shell scripts. Um, they're nothing super complex or ridiculous. The only thing that's really complex is this FFmpeg script, which if any of you have ever tried to do anything complex with FFmpeg, you know it gets pretty crazy pretty quick. But um, I think I've got it set up where it records in some pretty dang good quality. And um, yeah, uh, let me see. If I go back up here, I think there's some of these that I really wanted to assert, uh, like show off how they work because I think they're really cool. Um, the YT search one is nice because, you know, I, I want to be able to do pretty much everything in the terminal. Being able to watch YouTube straight in MPV, very nice. Um, hopefully, um, I don't get in trouble for showing off this script, although I have a feeling I will because it involves stuff that YouTube doesn't like, but who knows? Um, we'll, we'll find out. Um, eh, I mean, I don't really care. I mean, I would be more upset if, it, if the script stopped working than if I got in trouble for on YouTube. For it, but whatever. Um, here's my Reddit script. Now, our, if, if I just run Reddit, I'll, I'll show you what it does here. It's going to open up a fuzzy finder prompt, and so I can I can type in something to search for. So, like, let's say I want to search for Reddit posts involving my ThinkPad T440 P. I search that. It's going to give me a, a list of search results for uh, that based off of post title and description. So I can go through here, see like T4 ADS or T440P for the first time. But, all right, that looks like an interesting post. Let me check it out. And you're gonna see it's gonna open up and this application is called TUIR, which is an application for viewing Reddit in the terminal. So you can see up here, I can see the, um, the actual post and I can go through the comments down through here so very cool uh, I, I literally could not recommend it anymore it's very good um, I love it uh, and yes we want to quit so yeah it's it's literally just a tool for being able to search reddit find reddit posts look for Im information um, I do actually have a Gemini AI script so um, it say like I can query uh, the Gemini, the Google AI, because uh, I mean it, it's a completely free API to be able to work with. So um, I have it query and um, save stuff in Markdown format to a file 
dot local or wait hold on let me see you back up dot local share good lord if i could type share um ai history dot markdown so you can see this is kind of like the evolution of me working working through it but um i it, like i just have a query um like now i've got it set up with the script shows me the query of what I asked it. So like here I'm asking it um, how to make the back command wrap lines in the terminal. And then we have the time here. Um, it just saves that. And then down here is what it actually spit out um, like here. So, you know, the back command inline wrapping functionality, like, you know, it just, you know, it's just like any other AI. It just gives it to me in a markdown format which is, is pretty cool, so, you know, I can, and the way uh, the Gemini AI works is pretty simple. It, it's um, not that difficult. You just, um, you put your Gemini um, API key in um, this file here. You've got your AI history dot markdown, which is where it's saved, and then um, you can run Gemini like with a prompt you can just run it by itself and then you'll get a prompt and uh, you can also pipe stuff in um, to Gemini to get uh, to get it to give you a prompt so let's just run Gemini AI and then we'll give it a query of I am recording a video um, so uh, say hi to the viewers and then you'll see it opens up or it it bats out the AI, AI history file um, so oh, oh I pressed the wrong button uh, you, there we go there we go so down here you'll see I've got the last query I'm recording a video, so say hi. It says, hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Cool. Like, yeah, it's a pretty cool tool. And um, all these little scripts, I'm just I'm just running here on uh, uh, OpenBSD on my little ThinkPad. Um, it's pretty nice. I, I, I've actually enjoyed writing all these scripts and they are very, very useful. Um, and it's also just nice to, you know, be able to have all the scripts be my own thing and uh, like I just re really know how to use it all um, it's also cool to just be able to have everything be so much more efficient replace those heavy bloated um, you know like javascript written websites with something that actually is just clean and useful um, I also have a tool like git search is on here uh, and that's for uh, just being able to search GitHub and GitLab repos. Uh, so it'll search repos based off a of name and, um, like, you know, um, off the off the person's name, project name, and description. There we go. So I, I won't go ahead and do that, but you, you get a very simple program. It gives you a fuzzy finding list, and then you click on one, and it asks you if you want to get clone it. That's it. Um, I think it also gives you, I think it, I think it gives you the description. Um, like it'll, it'll give you the readme in a bat file and then ask you if you want to clone it. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So, yeah. Um, this has been my little scripts. Now I do also have a vol change one that lets me get, um, like I can get the level, um, or change my, my volume. Um, oops man vol change not the folder yeah just fall change so i can set my volume to a certain level up down it just, just uses s and dio ctl so instead of like you know getting this kind of output i can just run fall change um up to change it up down level mute um, or just an actual number to set the out, output level. I don't have to, you know, do anything crazy. Um, and also, when I want to get the level, 
it gives it to me in a much cleaner format because let's be honest current volume 100 percent is way cleaner than all of this um i, I just want to know what my system volume set at so yeah pretty cool i've i've enjoyed i've enjoyed scripting and making all this happen so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and um yeah, these scripts will hopefully be up on my GitLab here before too, too long. And uh, who knows, by that point, they may even be way better. So, yeah, stay, stay tuned. Bye, boys.